Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Dr. Wang. Um, I've come back again here to talk about diabetes, but this time I will pay more attention to the type of food. As I as promised in my previous video that I will do it and I'm here for that. So I don't need to be talking more about diabetes um, as a disease, but here now I will talk of the food types. Like so, we see how to improve on your situation while you are on your medication for those who choose to do so. Take for instance, if you are taking your metformin, if you are taking your insulin, that's fine, provided your doctor is aware of it and you are in contact with him or her, fine. So food becomes as a supplement. You all know that diabetes type 2 is a dietary pathology. That is, it, the origin comes from food aspect. That is the situation where the subjects are not able to regulate their taste. That's the whole thing here. If you discipline yourself, for instance, you are at a party, you take just what you need, things should be fine. But at times, unfortunately, you might find yourself with some friends that you get carried away. Like beer, you end up drinking, say, 10 bottles of beer, whereas you are not supposed to drink 10 bottles of beer. So same thing also for food. When you happen to be with friends, yeah, you get excited and get more than what you are not supposed to get. And that's why I'm here to clarify things here. So I will try to make sure that I avoid using technical terms. It's gonna be in a friendly language. So I have a PDF document. That PDF document is designed based on which country you are living. For instance, I have a diet plan for people living in Sub-Saharan Africa. I have another diet plan for people living in Europe and another one for people living in North America. Those three continents, they have three different diet plans. As the saying goes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. So it would be unfair for you to get the food meant for an elephant used to feed the seagull. It doesn't work that way. So the seagull, they live on a particular meal and the elephant living in the forest live on a particular meal also. So if you want to kill that elephant and you eat all the seagull, you simply interchange the, the meals. And I bet you that elephant will die immediately because it is eating a food that is not meant for the elephant. And the habitat also could be another thing. So that's my message here today. So essentially, food are classified in three classes. Now, before we even get into classification, then look at palatability. That's the taste in the mouth, how the food should be. Number one thing here, which I want to stress, um, it should be crunchy. Yeah, so when you are chewing, for instance, vegetable or rice and whichever thing, it should give that crunchy sensation. How, why is it that important, talking about crunchy effect of food? Now, the whole thing is this. When you say you are eating overcooked food, you are not doing good to yourself because the fiber in that food is completely gone. Normally, the fiber is meant to absorb the blood sugar value you have. So when the food contains more fiber, at the level of your stomach, I will call it the intestines, there's that pressure that it builds. We call it osmotic effect. So that osmotic pressure helps now to pull back the sugar quantity in the blood back to the stomach and then you send it out through the stool. So that's the message here. So you make sure that when you are in the kitchen, 
preparing your meal, make sure the temperature is appropriate. Our crawl should not be overcooked. Rice should not be overcooked. Vegetable should not be overcooked. Um, that's it. So what as the Italian they say al dente means crunchy. So that's what I want to hamper on here. We really want to make this journey on diabetes type 2 to become friendly. Um, I don't want you watching me to be suffering. Uh, yes, as, as it is, having diabetes is not the end of the world. Remember, I'm here to help you. Otherwise, I shouldn't have wasted my time making the video. But I'm so concerned about your situation and that's why I've taken time off to read books, do some research and come out with something decent. Now, I call them green food and non-green food. I will say, first of all, let me put three classes of food here. The white stuff, I don't want to call it food or something, let me just say the white stuff. White stuff here could be rice. If you really want to eat rice, I would say let it be your breakfast, not for dinner. Because rice belongs to class three, or call it the red class. Meaning that class three food have high index or we call glycemic index. So I tend to classify them based on their glycemic indices. So we have low, which is green, meaning that you can eat as much as you want, provided you do not have kidney issues. Be careful here when it comes to green meals. If you do not have issues with your diabetes, with your kidney, then that's fine because there's that risk of you overloading your plate and end up developing kidney stone down the road. Having kidney stone is not bad because you simply don't need to bombard those kidneys and things should be fine. But again, it just heads up. If you can, if you can take it a good quantity, then that's fine. Don't do not exaggerate it. Then we move now to the the the, the yellow class of food. So the yellow class of food are those ones that you can eat, but it should not be the ideal meal. Steak, for instance, you go for a party and there's everything there. Nobody is there to prepare a decent meal for a diabetic patient. So in that case now, you can eat what your host is offering for you. But when you come back home, or if you still have time, I would say engage yourself in some physical activity by walking, brisk walking. Exercise for 30 minutes helps a lot to stimulate the muscles. When you stimulate the, the muscles, that sugar value which might be spiking, there's that tendency of it plummeting. So that's why I'm saying that if you eat what you're not supposed to eat, don't go into panic. Just get yourself into some activity for 30 minutes and that should be fine. So white stuff, I will say be careful. Another white stuff again here is bread. Be careful also with bread. Bread are of various types based on their metabolism. So we have flour type zero, type one, type two, type three, type four, type five. I am more than happy to provide for you all this information if you contact me directly or you go to my YouTube channel and you will see it there. You simply just have to subscribe as well as Facebook. And all what I'm saying here, you will find it there. Should in case you don't find it, please do not hesitate, get back to me and I will make it available for you. So back to what I was saying, that white stuff is something also good, uh, and it's, it's good to an extent. Some limitations are needed, especially when you are aging. If you are over 60 years of age, I will say don't even get there. Avoid it. If you are 30 years of age, you might try it, but be careful. So remember, do not for any reason take rice in the evening as supper. Never you do that. Instead, go for more vegetable. Another good thing could be bitter leaf in the evening. 
Another one could also be um, taro, or what is called in pidgin country cocoa. That one will do you great. The, um, the tubers or the colmers are very good because they have what we call mucilage. That mucilage, when you boil it, you see it is kind of slimy. So being slimy is a good news in the sense that when it gets to the stomach, it undergoes metabolism. The metabolite helps to create what we call osmotic pressure. That osmotic, osmotic pressure, it is at the level of the stomach, whereas your sugar value is the other way around. So the parietal walls of the stomach that mucilage from your taro is touching it. So there's that pulling effect back this way. So as you pull it back this way, it helps to increase the volume of your stool. So you pass out stool loaded with sugar value. That's the good news here. So you don't have it in the blood circulating before. That's how taro helps to plummet the value for your blood sugar. Another aspect here, it is nitric oxide, the famous nitric oxide. Remember, when your diabetes is uncontrolled for quite some time, you end up developing so many complications. Diabetes mellitus, count how many letters you see in that, in that word. There are, over, there, there are about 15. So you end up having more than 15 medical conditions when your sugar value is not controlled. We don't want that to happen to you. And that's why I push harder on green leafy vegetables. Green leafy vegetables are highly loaded with nitric oxide. Nitric oxide has a very good property in vasodilation. And that's why when you are on that nitric oxide, you don't really need Viagra, even if you are having erectile dysfunction. Viagra is a quick fix, whereas the nitric oxide from natural sources, it is something natural, simple, though it takes time, it builds up in six weeks time. Well, Viagra is 30 minutes, but again, there's a downside there. I'm not saying that you should not take it. Before you engage yourself in taking Viagra, please speak with your doctor. My advice, it is the other option. It takes time for it to build up, but it works naturally without any hassle. Now, coming back to brown stuff like meat, I would say meat is a dead food. Why do I say meat is a dead food? First of all, I would suggest an experiment for those who still doubt what I'm saying. Just go to the nearest shop around your house, get one kilo of meat, put it in a jar, and put some carrots or um, any fruits that you like, banana for instance, in another jar. Leave them out at a normal room temperature for three, four, five days. And go back there, open those jar, and try to feel the, 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 the odor that comes out there. I will assure you that the jar that has meat or fish, in three days time, it is terrible. Terror, what makes it terrible is just because of the undergo what we call deterioration or putrefaction, as we say in chemistry, the clinical biochemistry of fish and meat. When they undergo this condition, it is of no use because that's what goes on also in your tummy. When you eat those things, that's what happens. And when they go into that state, they transform into an acidic structures, like, like the uric acids. In that acidic structure, what happens is, your body now struggles to neutralize that effect by producing excess mucor. And when your body starts producing excess mucor, it gives room for bacteria. So you see, so you see the, the damage, the ramification when you choose to live on fish and meat. 
that's what it takes you to. Whereas the other person who choose to go vegan, say eating vegetable, doesn't go in that condition. Again, my experiment is there to, to prove it. Get two jars or three jars, put meat in one, fish in the other, and then the other one put any green stuff, leave it for three days. You will come back here and testify that Dr. Wan is, is, is saying this thing from ex experience. You just uncock it after three days time and try to smell it. You get it for yourself. So that's what I'm, I'm saying here. I'm not here to, to make stories, but this is from evidence-based medicine. So do that at home and then um, take your stand. I want to see you guys healthy. That's why I'm making this video for you. And this lecture is meant for that. So to cut it short, I just want to summarize what I've said again before. I classify food in kind of two groups or three groups. The whitish stuff and then the brownish and then the green. Or, or call them food with high glycemic load, food with um, low glycemic index or indices. So those things are classified based on that value. I will give you some example here and then I can provide you my PDF document, which you can also print these things and keep in your wallet. It is kind of a vademecum. Vademecum in Latin means that a document that you carry all through your life, like your ID card. You can smack it in an ID card. You see the food there, you color them. I have, I have them colored already. The job is already done. You just need to print it and then do some plastification and have it like an ID card. So whenever you enter in a restaurant, you have it with you, you see the list of food. The one that have low glycemic index, you can eat that one. The one that have intermediate glycemic index, be careful. The one that have high glycemic index or indices, those ones are avoidable. The guy who runs that restaurant has no time to classify the meals. He is interested in serving you and make his money. So it is your responsibility listening to me to sort out all these things. So endeavor to contact me and get that list. The list has everything, all the food, based on your, con your continent. Say if you are in Europe, I would design for you a diabetic plan for those in Europe based on their glycemic indices and the glycemic load. If you are in North America, I will design for you what is meant for North America based on the diet plan. If you are in Africa, like in Cameroon, Rwanda, Burundi, or wherever you are, I can equal design one for you. You keep at home, like so, whenever you want to go out for, for your lunch and dinner, you have it there. It's easy. You, it will help you a lot. It will take away all this trouble of diabetes type 2, which is a dietary disease. No, you are not born with that disease in the first place. So remember, it occurs at some point in, in your life, meaning that it can be treated. Your life can become to normal. There's no witchcraft here or famla, as, the, as somebody might, might say. So be responsible, take action. Remember, there is only one you. Keep it at that. Your family, your loved ones need you. Try to be healthy, eat responsibly, be active, and pray to God. Thank you, and have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye.